I am sure. And you are listening to Light Up with Shua, a weekly podcast to open our hearts and minds on a journey with me. Hello and welcome to the segment Past to Totality. Today's topic is the word Islam. Its root and what it means from what I have understood. Sin la mim sa la ma is the root from which the word Islam is derived and its basic meanings are the following. Peace, purity, submission and obedience. In the religious sense, Islam means submission to the will of God and obedience to God's laws. The verb SLM Salama is a semantic root that has a general meaning of wholeness, fullness, or completeness. Islam means putting peace into action or practicing peace peacefully. So, in reality, the word Islam refers to the application of peace, not just, by, just peace itself. Islam calls to create peace. That is why Islam cannot be without practice. I will uh, give an, another example from this uh, root that comes is As-Salam, which is in chapter 59, verse 23. And uh, it's one of the attributes of uh, God, which generally means free of all blemishes and weaknesses. I will talk about a summarized concept here. Al-Islam, As-Salam, is the name of a system in which all shortcomings of an individual are addressed and her potentials are fully developed. The system in which the person is given protection from the negative forces and influences and feels secure. The individual lives in peace and works to extend this peace to their fellow human being across the world. So, Al-Islam is the code of conduct for life that Allah or God has designated for mankind or womankind available as an alternative and it is up to us to accept it or not to accept it. Uh, I would like you to pay attention to this quote from chapter 2, verse 256. It says, There is no compulsion in Islam. That's it. So, the person has the choice. So the person lives in complete harmony with others in society and does nothing to cause or avoids causing annoyance to others and thus contribute to the balance in the society. This is only when uh, that person willingly follows the universal or permanent values of the life uh, of the Quran. I personally believe that this can be attained if the person learns about themselves and live a mindful, conscious, and life of awareness. They do not cross the defined limits knowingly and believe in the working of the law of requital. Now, what is the law of requital? According to this, every deed and intention of a person produces an effect. Every deed. Now, this is called God's law of requital. That we are responsible for our intentions, actions, and decisions. So now the question comes to me, do we take the responsibility of our actions and decisions? Something to think about. Here I would like to bring Newton's law, third law of motion. For people who are not familiar with the Quranic law of requital, but are familiar with Newton's third law, which, will, which might help us understand the law of requital. And Newton's law says, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. So the law, law of requital says, for our actions and decisions, there is always, uh, there is, I mean, the result is produced. So it's in alignment to the third law of Newton, or Newton's third law is in, al in alignment with this law of requital. So by following the permanent laws, the person's efforts will be fruitful and do not go to waste. Not only will her own personality be balanced and developed further, but she will contribute effectively for the well-being of others. So now I will 
like to connect the wisdom that I have talked about, the gift to the humanity, the Quran, that I personally feel, which was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, almost 1400 years ago. I happened to be listening to Oprah Winfrey's Super Soul session uh, one Sunday, where Gabriel Bernstein, one of her speakers in the show, spoke about her book, The Universe Has Your Back. So she talks about her struggle to have a baby and what she discovered during that process. In her talk, she addresses that the audience, uh, to the audience that, her, um, that we have a habit to control everything in our lives and how she was doing the same thing. And so then she asked the audience, are you ready to surrender? So when she said that, I got interested and thought as if she was going to quote something from the Quran or Islamic tradition. And I said, let me listen to her more, what she has to say. Anyways, the concept of surrender or submission is very much embedded in Islam. As I mentioned earlier, that Islam means to surrender to the will of God. And then she talks about the next point and she says, Stop praying for what you need and start praying that is highest good for all. So now listening to her, I connected this to what I know from the Islamic faith and tradition as well. And that is that you pray for others for whatever is the best for everyone and it may happen with the will of God, something good or whatever for the others. So Muslims often believe and say that God knows the best. That is why you will hear often Muslims uh, saying, Inshallah, uh, meaning God willing, whatever is the will of God. So you put your effort, your intentions and will, but the ultimate power lies with the laws of the universe. Next, Gabriel talks uh, about being thankful for whatever we have. So she said that she looks for whatever is thriving in her life, not for something that is missing or she doesn't have. So now I understand again, this is gratitude or being thankful for what you already have and are doing well because of that. It can be because of your people in your life or things in your life. So being thankful and that is very much embedded in Islamic uh, tradition and in cultures that uh, it is constantly reminded that one should be very thankful for everything in, in every situation, whether it's painful or without pain or whatever you are in. So that is very much similar to Islamic uh, tradition. Next point she talks about is that she said, obstacles are detours in the direction, the right direction. Obstacles are detours in the right direction. Here she quoted Rumi as well and said, Wound is the place where the light enters you. So I assume that she knows that Jalaluddin Rumi was a Muslim Sufi. I don't know. I'll ask her when I see her or meet her one day. So this concept also is similar to Islamic tradition that I assume she has discovered or came to it after the knowledge she got. So to elaborate on this point, Muslims who follow the Quran carefully believe that if there is an obstacle, then that means we should submit to the will of God and not fight too much with it especially if it is constantly hindering you or your path. So we change our course because that is what must be meant for us or might be better for us. So we will find an alternative path or opportunity and move on. The next point she talks about was that she talks uh, that ask for the signs. Now that is again very much embedded in the tradition. A side note on that, the word ayah, which we loosely translate in English as a verse of the Quran, actually means signs. Just a side note. So she is talking about the universe that it speaks to you and always replies, but we just don't listen. So coming back to the uh, connection that I'm trying to build here, that is in the Islamic tradition, Ask for the sign is done several ways in the Islamic tradition. Let us say that you are striving and trying to make a decision and are unable to make it for yourself. So what you do is you ask God or divine intervention to guide you. So there you are asking for the sign to come in. Now that is sometimes equivalent to that you recite a prayer from the Quran at night and sleep over it and look for the sign in your dream or the next day or in daily happenings. 
and it is believed that you might get a signal somehow that whether you should or shouldn't go ahead with that decision that you were debating. So these concepts must be new for Gabriel and many people who were listening to her for the first time, but all this wisdom has been there for more than 1400 years. Or maybe before that also with other faith traditions. So I encourage you to create some space for this wisdom and try to explore for yourself. I can assist you or help you with the resources related to the Quran and Islam. So I would like to thank actually Gabriel Bernstein for educating people in the light of Islamic wisdom. Knowingly or unknowingly doesn't matter to me because the purpose is to get the guidance and the message out. And I assume that she doesn't know about the Islamic faith, the Quran and the tradition, or maybe she does. I hope to find out from her one day. So I would urge you to read the Quran. The Quran is for all the humanity. In chapter 2 of the Quran, the first few verses, ayahs, addresses the whole humanity, by the way, as the God-conscious people. So it is for every human being out there to learn and apply the teachings of the Quran if you want to. I hope this was helpful. Please subscribe, rate and review till the next episode of Path to Totality, a segment of Light Up With Chua podcast. Thank you. Thank you for staying with me through this exciting episode. Please don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for the next episode of Light Up with Schwa.